Oke, okay, good evening everybody, uh, everyone. Oke, okay, we thank you to University of Alberta, Canada, who want to uh, to share about the admission and information about uh, University of Alberta, Canada. Yeah, and the admission is Miss Catherine Melin. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, we will hear about the the information. And then if you have the question about University of Alberta, you can chat in YouTube Live. Yeah, there is column YouTube Live. You can chat there. Okay, maybe after this, I want to give the uh, time to Miss Fina ya yeah, from Sun Education first. Yes, okay Miss Fina. Oh this is about uh, Wardaya yeah, first. Okay, this is Wardaya. If you have any question about Wardaya, yeah, you can connect to here ya. Yeah. Okay. And this is our Instagram Wardaya College and you can follow our Instagram too. Okay, Miss Fina. Okay, Uh, perkenalkan semua, nama aku Vina dari Sun Education Tanjung Duren. Uh, nah, kali ini aku akan uh, memperkenalkan sedikit mengenai Sun Education. Jadi sebenarnya Sun Education itu apa? Uh, kami adalah the, uh, the largest and most complete international education consultant in Indonesia. Jadi uh, singkatnya adalah Sun Education ini agent yang membantu untuk kuliah luar negeri. Sun Education sendiri mempunyai kerjasama dengan sekitar 350 institusi dari 16 negara. Ada Australia, Kanada, China, Malaysia, Belanda, Inggris, Singapura, Amerika, Swiss, New Zealand, Prancis, Itali, uh, Spain, Ireland, Sweden, dan ada International College uh, Indonesia yang untuk pathway ke luar negeri. Service yang Sun Education berikan, ada yang pertama adalah konsultasi pastinya, lalu pendaftaran ke universitas, persiapan IELTS, TOEFL, dan SAT, translate dokumen, aplikasi visa, akomodasi, guardianship, flight ticket booking, airport pick up, hingga pre-departure orientation. Uh, aku mau menjelaskan sedikit mengenai admission proses ketika mendaftar ke university, jadi biasanya akan dimulai dengan konsultasi mengenai pemilihan university dan programnya, Kemudian jika sudah menentukan, kita bisa mulai mendaftar ke universitinya. Setelah mendaftar, student akan mendapatkan offer letter atau surat penerimaan. Nah, ini prosesnya kurang lebih sekitar 3-4 minggu umumnya. Setelah diterima di universitas, student bisa mulai membayar uang kuliah, lalu booking tempat tinggal, dan lalu akan dilanjutkan dengan aplikasi student visanya. Dan sebelum berangkat, nanti akan ada yang namanya pre-departure briefing. Sun Education sendiri uh, ada banyak cabang di Jakarta dan luar Jakarta. Kita punya head office di Kebon Jeruk, Geraha Kencana, dan beberapa cabang di uh, Jabodetabek dan juga di luar Jakarta. Uh, sekian presentasi dari saya. Jika ada pertanyaan nanti uh, boleh kontak ke nomor ini. Ini ada WhatsApp-nya atau email saya atau boleh juga nanti buka website sanedukationgroup.com. Ya, terima kasih. Oke, okay, terima kasih Bu Vina buat presentasinya ya. Oke, okay. uh, kita akan mendengarkan langsung uh, dari University of Alberta tentang uh, bagaimana cara masuk ke Universitas Alberta dan beasiswa yang ditawarkan ya. Jadi nanti bisa tanya langsung ke Miss Miss Catherine ya about uh, gimana caranya. Terus jangan sungkan ya, jangan malu gitu ya untuk bertanya. Nah terus nanti kalau ini nanti bisa hubungin. Sun Education perwakilan resmi dari University of Alberta, ya. Oke, saya sendiri dengan Dr. Anton Wardaya ya dalam seminar edukasi Wardaya 
pada hari Jumat 2 Oktober 2020. Oke, okay. uh, for the time I I give to the Miss Catherine, to Miss Catherine, uh, please for Miss Catherine. Thank you so much for having me again to present to your your school and your students, Dr. Rodaya. Um, so I actually got to visit the college um, back in February, just before um, COVID-19 was, I mean, it was serious then, but rather as widespread as it is now. Um, so I'm sad to not be in Indonesia this fall, um, as I normally do, but I'm really honored to be able to have these opportunities to connect with students in different ways. Um, and so Wardaya College is of course an excellent preparatory school for students. Um, and I'm happy to share with you all today some information about the University of Alberta and um, our partner in the region as well, Sun Education, is a great resource um, if you are looking for assistance going abroad. And um, as Ms. Fina mentioned, they help um, not only with Canada, but with lots of countries. So definitely encourage you if you are in grade 11, grade 12 to start considering your options. That being said, we're here to talk about University of Alberta today. Um, myself, Catherine Melnick, I did graduate from the University of Alberta with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. Um, I've been working in recruiting for the University of Alberta. This is my eighth recruitment cycle. Um, the University of Alberta is a top 100 uh, university in the world or top 120, depending on the ranking that you're looking at. We are also um, number four in Canada. We also have some other program specific rankings that might be of interest to you. We are one of the most international universities in the world, large university with over 40,000 students um, from over 150 countries. Um, really important to note, and we'll talk about um, careers and employment a little bit down the road. We are number two for graduate employment in Canada and also um, top 100 in the world, usually ranking in the 80s. Um, and what that means is There, there, there's a proven link between um, getting a degree from the University of Alberta and the employability um, that it gives students and the success in employment um, a student will have in their field or related. Um, so what we're going to do this evening is I'm going to give you an introduction to the university, to the city we're located in. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the features of coming to a Um, a university like Alberta and how we support our international students. I will talk about scholarships and tuition. And at the very end, I will go over admission requirements. Um, I do absolutely encourage you as Dr. Wadaya had mentioned, please do ask questions if you have them using the um, YouTube live function and we will make sure to get those questions answered. Um, and I will share my email address at the end as well. And we'll have a bit of opportunity for a Q&A then too. So Edmonton, the city that we're in. Um, Edmonton um, is the capital of the province of Alberta. It's about 1 million people. It's not too big, not too small. It is a larger Canadian city, um, certainly not as large as some of the top cities in Indonesia. Um, having been in Jakarta and spending Um, most of my time there in traffic jams, I can promise you that Edmonton um, is a, a bit more of a, a smaller city compared to that. Um, the province of Alberta is a great place for international students. Um, we tend to have higher salaries um, across than other provinces across the country and lower uh, tax, both sales and income tax. So what that means is as a student, as a recent graduate, you'll make more money. Um, minimum wage is $15 Canadian an hour here right now. Um, and you will definitely save more of it um, and give less of it to taxes. And also when you look at um, sales tax being only 5%, it makes things like buying a laptop or maybe down the road, a car really affordable. And Edmonton is a really student-friendly city. Um, it has a high quality of life, um, but definitely not the cost of living that comes with some larger Canadian cities like Toronto and Vancouver. Um, Toronto and Vancouver can definitely be as expensive as London, Singapore, or Tokyo. Um, and Edmonton, I think, 
really offers students an opportunity to live a great life at a reasonable um, rate. And also for recent graduates too, I think that's really important. Um, it's a very diverse city. We have lots going on. As you can see, we're known as Festival City, given that we have almost a festival happening every week. Um, it's a really good mix of urban um, with modern conveniences and 24 hour service um, options, but also um, having a huge number of trails and outdoors and having really like parks right within that urban center. Um, so I think um, having not been born in Edmonton, but having lived in Edmonton for 14 years now, um, of all the cities I've lived in, and I've lived in six cities in three countries, Edmonton definitely has that sweet spot that uh, a lot of us are looking for. Um, and then of course, Canada, um, just being a, a really popular choice these days, um, it's, um, I think, a really friendly, welcoming country with friendly um, policies for international students and for immigration afterwards. So um, the main campus is which is where the vast majority of our programs and students are located. Um, despite being a large campus, about 36,000 students in between bachelor's, master's and PhD, the average class size is still quite reasonable, about 38 students. Um, we graduate a good number of students looking for jobs. Most of them end up staying here in Alberta, um, even for international students. Um, the thing that I like about North Campus is that it really has everything you want or need. It is like a small city within a city. It's in the center of a city, so it's really easy to get to. Um, all of the transit runs through it. It has a doctor's office, um, pharmacy, bookstore, several coffee shops, including four Starbucks, as well as independent chains, um, cafes, restaurants. Um, there's a Korean grocery store um, with the Western options too. Um, there's housing and libraries and places to study and places to hang out. And we really make sure that when students come here, all aspects of their mental and physical well being are taken care of. So there's um, the fitness center and the gym. And I'll talk a little bit more about maybe the extracurriculars in a few minutes. But I just wanted to kind of drive that point home that when you're coming to the University of Alberta, um, studies is a huge aspect of it. But we also recognize that. Um, you know, you're making this big jump, this big leap, um, literally to move abroad. Um, and so we really, I think, do a good job at taking care of our students um, while they're here on the campus and making sure they have all of their needs met. Um, and we do have residents on the campus as well. So we have the first year residents. So if you're coming in directly from high school or to your first year of university here, there is a more dormitory style. We do actually guarantee housing if you apply by April 30th of the year you intend to start. Um, and we have upper year residences as well, which are more apartment style. Um, so that compromise of having a bit more freedom, but still being right on the campus and having close access to those amenities and services, um, and also being eligible for a lot of the programming that we do in residence to help make sure that your um, you know, again, living your, your best Edmonton University of Alberta student life possible. We are, um, I think part of the reason that we are a highly ranked university is definitely because of research. Um, there are a couple of stats for you here too. Um, in addition to our operating budget, which is huge, um, we have a, over $500 million in external funding between government and industry annually to conduct research on the University of Alberta campus. So research is absolutely um, a huge um, part of what we do here at the university in addition to teaching. Um, and what that means is um, if you wanted to at the undergraduate level, so when you're in your bachelor's degree, you could be doing research as early as your second year um, through your program perhaps, um, for course credit or as a volunteer or a paid um, assistant in a research lab. Um, and we also have funding for students to start their own projects and some really cool things have come out of research. Um, and then of course, with COVID-19 being um, 
on the front of everyone's minds these days. Um, we actually have the Li Ka Shing Institute of Virology on campus, and that was opened in 2010. And it's funny because we were um, at the university reviewing the opening ceremony notes um, a couple of weeks ago. And the point that was really driven home of the then president of the, um, of the Institute was that um, there is a virus out there that could be the next big virus. And we don't know what it is yet. It could be something in this certain family. Um, and uh, the, I mean, we, we've always known that something like this was coming. And so, um, you know, it's pretty cool that that was created 10 years ago and now um, has the virus and is studying its properties. It's, it's um, looking at cures and vaccines and um, symptoms um, and, and all of that. And uh, it was actually announced the other day that um, researchers at the University of Alberta um, are well ahead in the race for the vaccine or the cure rather. Um, and so it's pretty cool as a university to be a part of that um, research. And I think um, so many universities and institutions around the world are. Um, but to know that it's here at the University of Alberta and that we not only respond to current events, but also um, play a role in at times predicting and being prepared for current events, um, I think is really cool as an institution to be a part of. So that's all I'll say about research. Um, a bit more about the campus life itself. A lot of students ask me, um, what can I do on campus? And the answer is, Anything, I mean, with 400 student clubs to choose from, um, intramural sports, so if you want to split, play sports competitively, sorry, competitively, you can, but if you wanted to um, just kind of continue that, that path of well-being and physical fitness you've been on, um, you can absolutely join um, an intramural sport or do recreational activities here on the campus. Um, there's lots lots to do. There's no end to events and speaker opportunities and clubs and volunteerism and travel and work. Um, and I think, interestingly enough, the, the challenge of the student here is to remember that your first priority is to your studies and that these things are absolutely important um, to be a well-rounded person and also to develop connections in Canada. Um, and uh, I think a lot of students go through that learning curve in first year of remembering um, that their studies is number one. Of course, you're all smart students and possibly um, a pupil at Wardaya College. So I think you probably have a studies piece down really well. And I'm really happy to say that having been to Indonesia for several years now, uh, I can confidently say that students um, do really well in that adjustment process to university and to University of Alberta. So let's take a minute and talk about careers um, because I think probably all of you are looking to go abroad because this is on the forefront um, of a priority for you and for your family. So um, first of all, as an international student in Canada, regardless of where you go for your studies, you're able to work part-time on or off the campus up to 20 hours a week during the school year and full-time during the holiday. And that's something that's quite unique. Um, not every country will allow international students to work as part of their study permit conditions automatically. And I think that that work piece um, and especially paid um, is a really important um, opportunity for students to, again, build that network, build those work connections in Canada um, for post-graduation uh, employment. Um, the majority of our programs have a co-op or internship, essentially some kind of paid work experience. Um, all of them work a little bit differently, but essentially the idea is that after a certain time of studies, you will take a break from your studies and go work somewhere full time. And when you're in the co-op program, we help you find the placement. You still go for the interview and make the formal application and match with the employer but we help connect you to the jobs and having seen the, the jobs out there, there's always more jobs than there are interested students, which is great. Um, so you have a really good selection to choose from. 
Um, and then um, the co-op office would help you kind of check in and make sure that you're, you're doing well in your co-op for that term. And a co-op can typically be anywhere between four and in some cases up to 16 months. So you could do multiple placements, you could do one longer placement. Um, in our engineering program, the co-ops are, the terms are actually spaced throughout your studies. Um, but in most other programs, they're typically done in one block altogether. Um, so again, by program, it can be a little bit different, but it, it, it's good to know that there are paid work experiences here at the university. Um, and that's nice because it's a formally recognized uh, work placement that's on your transcript, on your degree. And I mean, the numbers have shown that a lot of those students end up getting hired um, after graduation from the co-op placement. And if not, you get a very good uh, reference letter of recommendation for when you are looking for work. And then again, in Canada, another great feature is that when you do graduate, you can apply for a postgraduate work permit of up to three years. Um, and so many students do um, take that option to stay in Canada and work. As I mentioned, Alberta having higher salaries um, and being kind of a newer and younger province that's growing. Um, there's a lot of job opportunity here and often faster routes to immigration um, just because we're not maybe as populated as um, some of our other provinces in Canada. So I think to summarize, really good work opportunities um, for students at the University of Alberta, whether it's part of a co-op program or not, um, there's no shortage of part-time and student-friendly work. Um, and then a lot of students do end up staying in the province of Alberta after graduation with Canada's friendly um, work policies. So let's talk about um, scholarships and then we'll look at tuition. So we absolutely do have scholarships and funding for students. Um, you'll find that in Canada, the common trend is to offer um, merit-based scholarships or scholarships that are based on your academic record rather than need-based scholarships. And we'll go over tuition in a minute, but I do think that Canadian tuition in general is very fairly priced in it. We charge what it costs to run that program for a student. Um, we offer a significant number of awards and about 20% of our students coming in do end up receiving some kind of scholarship money. So. I'll break it down. We have two different types of scholarships. The first category is admission-based. And what that essentially means is, as long as you apply for admission, you will automatically be considered for the three awards listed here. The gold standard, the international student, and the international country scholarship. And so you can see in total, just by applying to the university, you will be considered up for up to $20,000 Canadian in scholarships and awards um, if you've done well in your high school program. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about admission requirements in a second, but it's really important to note here um, that it really comes down to your high school transcript for these scholarships, because that's also what we use to uh, make admission decisions. And then the second type of scholarship is what we call admission, uh, sorry, application-based. So with these ones, there is a separate application. Um, you submit one application to be considered for these uh, three scholarships up to $40,000 total. And you can receive multiple scholarships. So if you receive the other scholarships, you could still receive one of these. Um, so as you can see, although we don't necessarily offer a full scholarship, there is opportunity for top students to receive a good amount of funding for their first few years of study. Now with these scholarships, it's important to note if you are in your final year of high school or if you're applying to the university this year, the deadline to apply for both admission and these scholarships is 15 December. So do yourself a favor and pull your phone or your calendar out right now and mark this date to keep in mind that you will have to apply for both admission and for the scholarship. And the scholarship, the scholarship application itself is very straightforward. Um, like I said, it's one application and basically we're looking for you to list your leadership, your extracurricular activities. Um, there's a couple of short, uh, short answer questions. 
like really no more than 250 words, five or six sentences. We're not looking for um, huge long answers here, just really straightforward um, questions and um, appropriate responses. And then um, academics is also a factor and there is a scholarship committee that will look and choose students who um, perhaps meet the criteria. So the criteria really comes down to um, leadership qualities as well as extracurricular involvement and commitment and um, having generally good marks and above um, in their high school record. Um, so that's really, hopefully I think, very straightforward in terms of scholarships, two categories. One, you all have, all you have to do is apply for admission and the other, again, quite a few larger scholarships, um, but with one application to be considered for multiple uh, scholarships. So we'll go right into talking about tuition. Um, and we recently introduced actually for this incoming year, fall 2020 and going forward, um, a scholarship guarantee and uh, sorry, a tuition guarantee. And so what that means is that the tuition that you see here for your year of entry will be the tuition for the remainder of your program. Um, and there, it's guaranteed, so it won't change. And it really um, hopefully will help you um, and your family have some sense of predictability and stability when you are um, doing the numbers for your um, studies abroad. And so um, most of our programs like science and arts are 29,500. Um, our business program is 35,000 Canadian and engineering is 39,500. Um, so again, it's essentially that we've taken the total cost of your program and divided it equally over four years. So you're paying in equal installments and you have um, the ability to kind of plan um, longer term. And not a lot of universities can actually guarantee the tuition um, for the full duration of their study. And so um, I think that's a unique feature of the University of Alberta. And again, um, given that we are a top uh, ranked university in Canada and internationally, um, I do think that our fees um, offer a really good value for students looking to study abroad. So let's talk about um, the most important part, the programs and admission requirements. Um, we have over 200 programs, which is a lot of programs to choose from. Um, we have engineering, business, science, arts, nursing, education. We have lots of different majors and minors to choose from. And the short link to learn more about our programs and requirements is uab.ca slash programs. Um, and basically part of my role, um, is helping students not only understand the requirements, but also maybe um, what program might be a good program to start out in or apply for based on their interests. Um, and we have, I mean, the programs can be as general or as specific as you want. So if you um, are a student with a um, dream to be a, an, an astrophysicist or a um, researcher in neuroscience, then we have those laid out paths for you. Um, and like I said, I mean, there's research, there's um, academic involvement from, from day one, if you want it. And if you're a student who has some general interest and you're not really sure what you want to do, we have a lot of general programs. You can also come in with an undecided major. Um, I mean, I would say one thing we're really good at is offering that flexibility for students and really helping students um, fit into, find a program that fits their, their interests. Um, with engineering, um, there's a common first year where all students take the same courses and then they go into their specialization. So engineering is another program or faculty that we're really well known for. Computing science and engineering is hugely popular these days. Um, medical and health sciences, economics, psychology. We have a lot to look at and so um, I'm not going to go over each program individually, but what I will do is talk about the basic requirements for admission, because essentially um, it really comes down to um, two things, um, a competitive average in your grade 11 and grade 12, and of all the courses you're taking, we'll look at five, and I'll talk about what five those might be in a second, 
but the other requirement is English language proficiency. So the vast majority of our um, direct entry from high school or transfer programs, um, it really comes down to a student's academic record and proof of English language proficiency. Um, it's important to note that unless you are at an American high school, we don't require the SAT necessarily. Um, even if you are at an American high school, we've made some changes to be more flexible this year with COVID-19. Um, no, no essay, no personal statement um, for admissions, certainly. Um, no references, um, no extracurriculars that we look at for admission. Those are really important. And if you do have them, then you should be considering those additional scholarships. Um, but admission is fairly straightforward. So looking at your grade 11, your grade 12 marks, um, when you're in your final year of high school, um, we will essentially look at um, that, th that transcript with these results before you actually have your final results available. So I'll go over timeline in a little bit, but application did open as of yesterday and the deadline to apply is 1st of March. So we will look at either your grade 11 final results or your grade 12 first semester marks uh, in progress. Um, we do also accept transfer students. The process is a little bit different, um, but you still have to kind of present these five subjects, whether coming from high school or university. And then there's additional components if, you, um, if you're coming from university and for transfer credit and so on. Um, and so those five subjects, vary by program. Um, the first subject that we always look for is English. So um, no matter what program, English is always going to be one of the subjects we look for. The other four, of course, those are the ones that really vary. So for a program like science and engineering, we are definitely going to be focusing on your math and science subjects. Uh, engineering will be focused on your physics and chemistry as well. If you are applying to um, sciences, then we can also look at biology. Um, we can also look at a lot of your option courses after math and science courses. So um, your Bahasa language, your, um, your civics class or social studies, or um, I mean, I know that you have a wide number of subjects if you're coming from an Indonesian school um, or if you're coming from an international school, it's the same idea. Um, really looking at um, the subjects you've taken and um, if you're applying to perhaps arts or if you're looking to go into business, um, the subjects that we look at are a little bit more flexible. If you're applying to business and economics, then math will also be very important um, in the calculation. So that's kind of admissions in a nutshell. And that's why that website, uab.ca slash programs is really handy because you can actually go to that website, look up your program or programs of interest and see exactly what subject or type of subject we're looking for. And if you do have questions about the subjects um, or what you think is required, please do let me know um, in the comments, we can address some of those. And if you do have specific questions, that's a great opportunity to email those to me because I would love to clear up any of those questions you have about the subjects. And of course our partner Sun Education um, who works very closely with us would be able to help you sort those questions out as well. And then in terms of English language proficiency, um, probably the most common test we see is IELTS. I'm actually not sure where Indonesia is right now in terms of IELTS centers um, being reopened. I know that even if they are reopened, sometimes the wait to get into a test can be quite long right now, just because there's so much backlog from the last several months. So last year in response to COVID-19, we did announce that we would accept Duolingo. Um, and Duolingo is done online at home and they send the score directly to the university. And um, we will be introducing um, Duolingo requirement, uh, rather option this year, this cycle as well. So I think hopefully that requirement should be really straightforward and we don't actually need the uh, Duolingo or English proficiency proof for the initial evaluation. So looking at a timeline, as I mentioned, application opens as of yesterday and you can apply online anytime between now and 1st of March. After you apply, 
you actually get a, a login with us. You log into your student portal and you can see what documents we're looking for. And the initial evaluation um, is all done with scans of documents. So there's nothing at this point that you would need to mail to the university. Um, we will take scans of anything you have um, so far, results in progress. Um, and then as I mentioned, English proficiency is not needed for the initial evaluation and the conditional offer. Um, and keep in mind, again, if you're applying for those additional scholarships, the deadline to apply is a little bit earlier, 15 December. Um, in the spring, um, there's um, assistance with course registration and um, the deadline to accept your offer is May 1. We typically start um, making offers to students in the next month or so. Um, so if you're a student who's done well in grade 11, we can absolutely offer you um, admission very soon if you apply soon. Um, if you, let's say, perhaps apply with your grade 11 results and they're not where you wanted them to be, um, we never would reject or refuse a student. What we would actually do is just say that we're waiting for your grade 12 first semester results. And part of what I can do is advise on your profile. Um, all of the programs have a competitive admissions process, which means that there's no kind of minimum to guarantee admission. It really depends on the demand for the program versus applications at any given time. Um, that being said, I can still make advice if you're on the right track, um, if there's maybe a better program um, that you might want to consider as a second option, something like that. I, I really try and help students um, understand the, the best way forward to the university um, and give really straightforward advice. So a couple of other deadlines. You can see here the final deadline, 1st of August, is when you submit your final documents. Even last year, we were flexible on that because I know schools were closed for quite some time and exams, uh, the results were quite delayed, um, not just in Indonesia, but everywhere. Um, but that kind of gives you a timeline of by when you would need to even submit your final documents. And this is for a September start. And September is our only intake. School started September 1 this year. So that's kind of a common um, date. So that essentially is the timeline in a nutshell. Um, and then I see um, that uh, hopefully maybe a couple of questions have been coming in, but that's kind of the end of my formal presentation. Um, here's our website, uab.ca slash iApply. Applications are open. Here is my um, name and contact information, Catherine, which is my first name, dot melnick at ualberta.ca. So um, lots of resources here to help you today um, in the next little bit if you do have questions. Um, so I'm just going to take a minute to maybe take a look and see what, if any questions have come up. Oh yes, okay. So thank you, Dr. Wardaya. So I'm just looking at the, the question. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, Ms. Catherine. There is a question from yeah. Samuel. Yeah. In, yes. In University Toronto, we can choose multiple degree to create a unique program. Can you do this in University of Alberta? So Samuel, um, I'm not sure if you're referring to like multiple degrees or multiple majors. So we do have a lot of programs where two majors or a double major or a major minor um, is possible. We also have a certain number of um, dual degree options like where you would perhaps complete an education in a science degree in five years, um, for example. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I think there are options if you have a few different interests in mind to create quite a combined specific program. I will say, and this is uh, probably true at U of T as well, um, if you are looking at a very specific program uh, that involves perhaps professional qualifications, um, like engineering, um, <coughs> sorry, or accounting, um, 
if you wanted to do those types of programs, you might find that the program itself is a bit more restrictive just because there are certain courses that you need to complete in that four-year frame in order to um, get the qualification related to that degree. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, Samuel, perhaps if you do have um, more questions, you're welcome to follow up in the YouTube chat. And I do see that um, Samuel had a few other questions. So um, about one in five students receive scholarships a year. And I should clarify that the scholarships I presented on are entrance scholarships. Um, so those are scholarships specifically focused for incoming students. Um, and there are um, some continuing scholarships. I will say the majority of scholarship is focused on entrance to the university, um, but some of them are renewable and there are other scholarship opportunities in your upper years. Um, in terms of type of research we have at the University of Alberta, it's really, really massive and tied to every single faculty. So um, with the ranking that we have and with the breadth of programs that we have, um, the list of research is way too long. Perhaps if you had a specific area you're looking at, please reach out and let me know. Um, and then, so Samuel, for your last question, um, so you would present grade 12 marks, but at the end of that, by that kind of August 1st deadline, or depending on where schools are at at that time, it could be a little different. But the idea is that when you're in grade 12, you would present your marks in progress. So either your final grade 11 or your grade 12 first semester. So you would typically finish your high school um, in the spring and then start university uh, in Canada in the fall. And then Pepper had a question about um, extension program for postgraduate students. Um, so we do have master's and PhD studies. Um, what we don't really offer is a lot of short-term programs um, or like postgraduate certificates or one-year courses. Um, so myself, um, I really focus on undergraduate recruitment um, with the recruitment for master's and PhD. It's handled entirely by the department directly. Um, so if you are looking for a master's and PhD, it's really important to note that in Canada, um, there is um, not someone like myself that might be kind of a general counselor for all incoming programs. We have 500 in master's and PhD and every program is a little bit different in requirements. Your website is going to be um, your first resource for information. Um, and then typically you would look at contacting the program directly for further um, qualifications or requirements. So um, hopefully that gives you a bit of a starting point if you're looking at postgraduate uh, at UAlberta or in Canada. And Samuel, um, yes, you can absolutely apply with grade 11 marks. So that's kind of the first window of opportunity for admission. When you're in grade 12, we can look at your grade 11 marks. If they're um, where the competitive requirement is at that time, um, we'll admit you. Um, and again, we do offers starting in the next couple of weeks here. Um, and then if not, we'll just wait for your grade 12 first semester um, results. So it's never a no, it's just a, a not yet until we're waiting for more pieces of information. Okay, another question again, Ms. Catherine. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the minimum IB score to be considered as uh, eligible applicants? Yes, so um, the, uh, the um, IB program, um, again, even though you have the six courses, we do look at the five subjects. We do also take predicted scores. With IB predictions, we actually take them after 1st of March and we do offer final, truly final admission to the program based on the IB um, uh, predicted scores. Um, again, because the um, programs are competitive admission, there's no kind of one minimum to guarantee acceptance. Um, engineering and science programs in general are more competitive than um, arts and pathways to business. Um, I would say um, typically like mostly fives um, to kind of be in a range that in your individual courses that would be competitive for some of the the engineering and science programs, perhaps higher. Um, and then I would say as a minimum score to apply to the university in general, you want to be around 30 points, including your predicted, um, your rather your bonus points. 
But again, that's not a guarantee for admission, just kind of a starting point to give you an idea of where you should be in order to consider applying. Okay, another question again. How does the community interact with Muslim and is it easy to find halal food there? Yeah, those are two great questions. And I think something that I talk about um, a lot in the regions that I travel to, um, which has happened to be um, Muslim majority countries. And so, um, first of all, halal food is increasingly uh, easier to find in Canada at Edmonton. Um, there's a lot of halal specific uh, butchers or grocers or section of a grocery store um, that support communities that have certain needs. Um, and then I think, I mean, in addition to being on campus, there's a campus imam, there's a campus um, multicultural, multi-faith prayer space. Um, there's also a, a mosque quite near to campus. I've actually heard that that mosque is good, but there's a better mosque um, to go to for prayer that's a little bit further out. Um, but I think while well, maybe I can't speak to where is the best place to pray, there is a significant Muslim population on campus and they would be happy um, to guide students to, to, to kind of that community and those cultural connections. Um, and I would also say it's really important in Canada that everyone feels like they have the, the right and the ability um, and the safety to pray how they want, where they want, when they want. So we welcome um, all religions and all, all cultures in that sense. Thank you, Ms. Catherine. Uh, there is another question again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I uh, see the question about the P is it about the PhD program. Uh, no, about okay. um, well, what is the uniqueness of Alberta University of Alberta, especially in engineering faculty. What is the, the, sorry, the what of the university? The uniqueness of University right. of Alberta, so, especially in a uh, faculty of engineering. Yeah, so um, within engineering, I mean, the University of Alberta, just because of our proximity to the oil sands, we are well known within Canada and internationally for being um, a university with heavy partnership and focus on energy. Um, and of course, that kind of definition changes a little bit as we look at climate change and alternative fuel sources, um, but still looking at um, chemical and petroleum engineering being hugely popular um, fields. Um, again, as that changes, we've seen a huge rise in computing science and that more kind of tech side um, demand. And so um, our computing science faculty is absolutely massive and their focus and their ranking is really in artificial intelligence um, machine learning. Um, and then um, another kind of niche program that we have is mining engineering. Um, again, simply because of where we are in the prairies in Alberta and ha having so many natural resources literally underneath our feet. Um, and then, I mean, we absolutely have a civil, mechanical, um, environmental, electrical options. I would say those are also very strong programs, just perhaps not what we're known for um, internationally compared to like chemical engineering. Okay, uh, is University of Alberta offer fully funded scholarship? So we don't offer fully funded scholarships. Um, hopefully you saw, I mean, with the scholarships that we do offer, top students can receive a good amount of funding, but it won't cover the full cost of your, your program and your cost of living here in Canada. Okay, another question again. How about the co-op co opportunity there? Yeah, so we do have co-op. Um, the majority of programs have some kind of paid work experience. Um, it really depends on the program you're going into, whether it's done um, in between uh, study semesters are all at once, um, but there is a good range um, of paid um, opportunities connected to the vast majority of our programs. Okay, and then uh, another question again, Miss Catherine. Mm. If we don't have a certificate like competition or 
or Olympiad is it is available. How about the yeah. opportunity there to enter yeah, so, the university? Yeah, the, the certificates and the Olympiad and the extracurriculars are important um, for students and they would perhaps be relevant to our additional um, application-based awards where you do apply and submit your extracurricular, your leadership involvement. But in terms of the admission process itself, it's really based on your grade 11, your grade 12 marks. Okay, another question again. Uh, what is the most popular uh, faculty or major that uh, hmm. yeah, many students want to enter it? Yeah, I mean, I would say these days, um, and especially in Indonesia, STEM is always hugely popular. So yes. looking at science, technology, engineering, and medicine, um, or rather medical and health. Um, economics um, is also hugely popular and pre-business and like the traditional business routes like finance and accounting. Um, that being said, so science, the faculty of science is our largest faculty at the university. Um, and engineering, while being a hugely popular program, doesn't necessarily have the same um, intake that science does. So um, I would say there's pretty good kind of even interest across some of our major undergraduate um, programs or faculties. Okay, another question again. Um... What is the estimation living cost in Edmonton? That's a good question. So um, what I will actually do is just take a second and pull up um, from our website what we have on the website for cost of living. Um, and then I see a question from Pepper about the dorms as well. So we'll just take a second to pull that up and chat a little bit about the cost of living. So I'll just um, quickly pull that up here. Um, and I know I talked a lot about how um, friendly um, Edmonton is for students, um, both in terms of um, affordability and also just kind of the culture in general. So I'll share my screen. So hopefully you can all see um, on our website. So when you go to uab.ca slash I apply under tuition and scholarships, if you hover, you can go down to tuition and fees. And there's the cost calculator, which um, displays the estimates I showed you earlier in a little bit of a different way. And it also shows you some of the estimates for your non-instructional fees. The meal plan isn't on this list because, sorry, the residence and the meal plan is not on this list because it's built into the cost calculator. Um, but I will say verbally that um, the residence, a um, double room, so two people in a shared room, um, starts at about 8,000 Canadian dollars. Um, and if you had a single room or a single bath um, with different meal plan levels, um, it, can, it can go up from there. So 8,000 is kind of your starting point um, for the dormitory for your first year. And so looking at um, other costs to consider, um, of course, food, the estimates that you see here, 2,500 and 2,700, um, you're probably not going to be spending that in your first year if you have your meal plan. Um, but otherwise, this is a good estimate, perhaps in your upper years when you're living on your own. Um, clothing, I mean, really the, the major things that you need, um, especially when you move to Canada, you've probably heard we have winter here. So you need to be prepared for that. Um, Canada is definitely more expensive than Indonesia for food and a lot of clothing purchases. Um, sometimes it's not more expensive, but I think in a lot of cases it can be. Um, and that's kind of the biggest adjustment I see for students is um, kind of understanding some of those day-to-day -day costs um, living in Canada versus living back home. Um, so I can certainly speak to like what a typical item of clothing costs, um, but it would be kind of up to you and your family to budget for how much you would like to spend on clothing every year. Um, if you're frugal and you're good and you you wear your clothes often, it'll be less, but if you like to shop, then you'll want to budget more money. The transit pass is included in your tuition fees, um, your non-instructional fees already. And the books and supplies listed here is more of an estimate. So I don't expect you to spend 1200, um, but you could spend up to that um, depending on 
um, the books recommended for your program um, or any special equipment you might need. And then miscellaneous would be things like um, laundry, um, your mobile phone plan. Um, cell phone plans in Canada are very, very expensive again compared to back home. So that's why you might see that number being a little bit higher than you might expect. Um, so yeah, hopefully that gives you a general idea of what things can cost in Canada. Okay, another question again, Ms. Catherine. Yeah. Who well, differs is University of Alberta. Is there a club or community that can help us for a deaf? Yeah, so um, we have about 15%, one five of our students coming from outside of Canada. Um, but I mean, keep in mind that even in Canada, um, there's a lot of first generation um, and recent um, recently, um, you know, rather Canadians that have recently moved to Canada. So Canada being very diverse itself, you're going to see that reflected in the campus as well. Um, even looking at myself, my last name being Melnick, um, although my family has been here for, for a few generations, um, there is still a very strong Ukrainian connection. That's where the name Melnick comes from. Um, so I think we're all kind of unless you're Indigenous, unless you're a First Nations member, um, everyone coming in, in Canada has arrived at different times and the, the campus really kind of reflects the rich cultural diversity that Canada has to offer. Um, and so on the campus, there's an Indonesian Students Association. Um, there's also Malaysian Students Association. So not saying that Indonesia is the same as Malaysia, but to, to give you an idea that there are significant populations from Southeast Asia coming to the University of Alberta every year. Um, we actually have a few hundred Indonesian students um, on campus in both undergraduate and master's PhD programs. Um, there's also um, religious organizations and student clubs. Um, there's student clubs um, related to um, different interests, perhaps um, like sports or music or dance that you like to do. Um, and so I think, I think that it, to summarize, um, the University of Alberta has a really good kind of coverage and opportunity for students to be a part of and celebrate their home culture and share that with others in Canada. Um, and also to learn and appreciate other cultures as well. Um, and so I, I do see the question just quickly about um, PhD programs. So um, um, I see you're wanting to know, um, should you get approval, approval from the supervisor before admission? Um, I don't really advise too much on PhD programs. I will say though, if you are applying to PhD, it's a really good idea to be um, in contact with a professor or at the very least have a, a good knowledge of the research um, related to your field happening here at the university, um, the faculty that are involved, um, and how your plan for research might fit into what we already have, um, and your support plan. Um, some programs will require you to have a professor in mind or have contacted them, and others might not, but they would expect that a match uh, would be imminent. So that kind of information is really important to check on their website because every department will outline um, very um, clearly according to their master's or PhD program, um, what they expect in terms of students applying to that faculty, that department. Um, and so the website for um, graduate programs um, is ualberta, U-A-L-B-E-R-T-A dot C-A slash grad studies, G-R-A-D studies. Yeah. Okay, maybe this is the last question. Okay, maybe I think uh, there is uh, no question again in YouTube chat, right? Yeah, yeah okay. I think that was all the questions from the YouTube All channel. the questions already answered, right? Uh, the last question. In this pandemic condition, is the study still online or blended learning? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. So um, right now, the majority of programs are um, online, um, just in response to 
um, what the government has told us is allowed in terms of in-person gatherings and, and how that's limited right now. Um, and it's also because we want to keep our campus community safe. Um, and the third reason that we're largely online is because our student population, um, a huge portion is abroad right now, um, or not even in Edmonton if they are in Canada. And so we recognize that with borders being closed, um, we don't expect students to be able to magically uh, show up to the country and to Edmonton. Um, I think we can all keep in our, our thoughts and our, our minds and perhaps our prayers that um, the situation with the virus improves and that we can see a change so that studies may resume as uh, usual and we can return to our new normal very soon. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Catherine. Okay, uh, maybe do you have a closing statement before we close? Yes. Yeah, so thanks again for having me, Dr. Wardaya. It's, it's really a pleasure to um, meet with you and present to your students. Um, just really impressed with the, the work that your, your college does in terms of preparing students for post-secondary studies and for their academic pursuits. Um, thank you to the students that took time out of their evening, um, a Friday evening, no less, to come in and listen to my presentation. Um, really appreciate your interest. Once again, my email, um, kmelnick, M-E-L-N-Y-K, at ualberta.ca. That's my shortened email. If you do have questions, um, feel free to let me know. And you can get in touch with me through Wardaya as well. And uh, also Sun Education and Ms. Vina had shared her contact information and they are a great resource um, day to day in the region if you prefer local connections. So I hope everyone is staying safe. Please take care and be in touch soon. Tara Makasi. Oh, I think you're on mute, Dr. Wardaya. Thank you, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Catherine for the presentation from University of Alberta. Thank you for 70 audience who attend this seminar, webinar. And then, uh, jadi jika kalian mau uh, mendaftar uh, Universitas Alberta, kalian bisa menghubungi uh, Sun Education ya, dan itu tidak ada biaya apapun lagi. Ya, tadi sudah dikasih tahu sama Ibu Vina juga. Ya, oke, okay, maybe uh, we close this webinar. Thank you so much ya yeah, for uh, this opportunity, Miss Catherine. Thank you so much, everyone, and good evening. Keep healthy and keep safety.